Inheritance Part 1 Inheritance. When building classes, many times you'll need to write a new class that is a modification of an existing class or an extension of it. For example, let's say we had a class called Person, which we will create later, and it has first name and last name. Then later you decide, oh, you know what, I need a class called Student. And you could say, well, Student has a first name, it has a last name, and an ID. You shouldn't have to recreate first name and last name because student, well, it makes sense that student is a person. So you should be able to say that, you know, this new file is called student, and by the way, it's a person. And by doing that, you should be you should automatically gain everything that a person has because if a student's a person, he would therefore have a first name and last name. We're going to learn how to do that in this chapter. The class that is being extended from is called a parent. In our example, person would be a parent class of student. It's also called a superclass, so if I say parent or superclass, I'm talking about the class that is above another. The new class that is being created from the parent class is called a child class or subclass. The, each file can have one parent. So maybe you have person is the parent of student. Um, then you might have another file called honors student honor student that is a student and maybe it's a student with some extra parameters so honor student would have a parent of student but it would have an ancestor of person the parents parent or its parents are known as ancestors anything more than one level above you is an ancestor and we also have descendants so the child's children or their children are known as descendants. For example, honor student in our example would be a descendant of person. When you extend a class, the child class will be given all of the parent's attributes, methods, and access to the parent's constructor. So if you're a student, you're going to need access to the constructor for person because since you are a person, you need to be able to set that data. The act of gaining everything from your parent class is called inheritance. Inheritance facts. A class can only have one parent, which we already talked about. Um, you will, because you can't, like, um, if you were making a class called Transformer, and let's say Transformers, sometimes they're cars, they're also kind of like people, they can, you know, walk around, they can talk, they can drive. You couldn't say, well, I'm creating a class called Transformer, and it's a descendant of car, and it's a descendant of person. In programming, that doesn't work. You have to pick one parent. Either you're a person, or you're a car. So, you could say Transformer extends person. It has everything that a person has, and then you just have to create parameters for the car portions of that class. And uh, let's move forward to the next one. You gain all the attributes and methods of your parent class and any of any any methods and accessors from ancestors. Although you can only access things that are public. If it's private, you can't access it. So student has a first name and last name, regardless of whether it's public or private. But if it wanted to change it or print its value, it wouldn't be able to if first name and last name were private. It would have to do so through accessors and mutators, which are public methods or public means of accessing and changing that data. The first line of the next point is the first line of code in the constructor must be a call must be a call to the parent class constructor. We'll go over that later and you'll see how that works. If you want to change a parent's or ancestor's method, it can be done through a process known as method overriding. Earlier we learned about method overloading. Method overloading is when two methods have, have the same name but different parameters. Method overriding is when your parent or ancestor has a method that you like but doesn't work quite right and needs some adjustment. So what you do in the child class, you write the method exactly as it appeared, the header appear, is written exactly as it appeared in the parent class, but you put different code inside of it. This is known as method overriding. When you override a method, you should, you do not have to, place at override above the method. This will have the 
compiler create an error if you mess up the mes method header. Like maybe you misspell it and you're not really overriding the method. More facts. Every class is derived from the class object. Methods gain from object. We have equals which we use. True when the calling object and the receive object have the same memory address. False otherwise. Usually we should overwrite. Uh, should be overwritten. Oh, sorry. Let me flip, flip back. It should be overwritten to compare the data of the two objects. We have two string. It returns the class name of the object followed by its memory address. That's usually not very meaningful to us. This should be overwritten to return a string containing the important pieces of the class data. Format for extending a class. Public class, whatever you want to call your class, extends whatever you want your parent class to be called. Calling a parent's class constructor. Remember I told you in a constructor the first line of code must be a call to your parent class's constructor. It's super, parenthesis, whatever parameters your parent class wants in its constructor, parenthesis, semicolon. Calling a method from your parent class. You just say whatever the method name is, parenthesis, parameters. Calling a parent, calling a method of a parent class when the subclass overwrote it. So if the subclass said, you know what, I don't like your two string, I'm going to write a different one. Well, maybe you want to use some of the, maybe you want to use the code in your parent's class two string method in addition to some extra code. How you would call your parent, if you have a method and your parent also has the method, to call the method above you, you would say super dot method name parenthesis parameters. This can also be used to call ancestor methods, but it only goes, it keeps going up looking for the method till it finds a method with that name. There's not like ancestor two up, ancestor one up. You keep going up from your level until you find the method with the specified name. So if you have object, person, student, student can't, calls, can't call objects to string. If I did super dot to string, it would call students to string. If student did not have a to string and student said super dot to string, it would call objects to string. Required construction of the parent class. The first line of code in a class's constructor, we're getting back to this point again, must be a call to your parent class constructor. You may think this is untrue. Due to classes we have written so far, do not seem to call their parent class's constructor, which would be object. When you fail to call the constructor of the parent class, Java will automatically attempt to call the parent's default constructor. We will always call a parent class constructor even if it's to call the parent class default constructor. This will remind us that it's happening. On the AP test, sometimes they're going to leave it off and, you're like, and you'll forget that it called the parent class's default constructor. So we're always going to write it so we remember it happens when we get to the AP test. Oh, we're to our example already. So we're going to do, a we're going to do an example, like I said before, of a person and a student. It's going to be very short. So let's get through here. Moving my face down a little bit. All right, so we need to make a Java file. So we need jcreator. Oh, here it is. <coughs> file, new, project, empty project. We're just going to throw it on desktop. Uh, person and student. So file, new. We're going to have a main because we'll do something in main. This may take more than one video, only have six minutes. Main file. File new file. And we're going to call this one person. File new file student. All right, we're going to go through this really quickly. Public class person. <coughs> Let's go ahead and change the font size real quick. Uh, I always turn it back down because I hate working in a large font. Um, let's say 20. Apply. That should make it easier for y'all to read. Public class person. It's going to have a private string name, semicolon, private string, uh, what's, private string first name, private string 
last name. We're going to have a constructor, public person, string, first name, comma, string, last name, curly brace, curly brace, this dot first name equals first name, this dot last name equals last name. Now, when we write our next class, uh, student, student will not be able to access first name and last name because it's private. I don't want students to be able to change their name, so I'm, but I do want them to be able to know what their name is, so I need to make an accessor for that. Public string <coughs> get first name return first name being lazy, control C, control V, and get last name, return last name. And I'm also going to write a two string. So let's try that at override thing. Why does it keep jumping down there? So let's just leave that public string to string curly brace curly brace I don't know why it's behaving this way but if you want to see somebody's name this is for a person we're gonna do their last name comma first name last name plus a comma plus a space well with a space and then first name so this is how we're going to write our two string for what a person is. So now we have mutators, we have accessors, and it's all pretty. Let's compile this file. And it's happy. And it's like, well, why does that override work? It should generate an error. No, because we extended object. So now we're going to go write public class person. <clears throat> public class person extends public class student extends person. So our next video is going to apparently start off with the completion of this. Private int student ID. And when I create a person, sorry, when I create a student, I'm going to need three pieces of information. Although you do not see first name and last name here, it's data that we have to have because a student is a person. So to create one, we'd need to know what their first name and last name is. First name, last name, comma, int. My face is over this, but I'm just writing student ID. And then the first thing I have to do is build the part of myself that's a student. Notice I say parenthesis, parenthesis. I am calling my parent class constructor my default constructor. If I go over here, there is no default constructor, so it can't call it. So I look over here, I'm like, oh, first name, last name. So I'm going to send first name comma last name. Then I'm going to say student ID equals student ID. And that doesn't look right. I forgot something very important. This dot. And maybe for a student ID, we only want be able to access it as well. So we need an accessor public int get student ID. And it returns student ID. Now we're going to run out of time, but let's make sure this compiles before we move on to another file. It compiles successfully. Now I'm going to go to main, set our skeleton up for main, public class main file, curly brace, curly brace, public static void main string, bracket, bracket, args. All right, I got 30 seconds left. I think I'm going to stop the video and let it compress, and then I'll record the next video, which will start us off in the main file. We'll create a person and a student. We'll print them. We'll see how they work, and then we'll override the two-string method after we see how students and people behave. Picking up where we left off. So I want to show you just real quick. Let's create a person, P equals new person 
and his name is John Smith. So, John, comma, Smith. Now, because I wrote a two string for him, I can just do system dot out dot print John Smith. So let's run this real quick, and we'll see it prints John Smith beautifully. Bam! John Smith. Now I want to create a student. So I'm just going to be lazy. Because, yeah. Bam! So I'm going to create a student. S. Um, comma. And I'm going to give him an ID. So this is his ID. But now, watch when I print him. When I print him, oh, I don't want John Smith. Uh, Jane Doe. Doe, comma, Jane, John Smith. They both print like people. But for a student, maybe I want it to say hyphen her ID. Oh, sorry, her ID hyphen then her name. So we have to go change student. And Well, first of all, how's it even getting a two-string? So over here in main, we say, oh, it's a student. So we go to the student file, and it's like, oh, there's no two-string. So what it does, it goes up one level looking for two-string. It's like, oh my gosh, there's a two-string. So it does their last name, comma, their first name. Now we go to student, and we're like, I really need ID to print. But we can't go to person and tell it to print the ID, because it doesn't have an ID. It's a person. So what we do is we say, you know what, I know person overrode two string, but we're going to say theirs wasn't good enough, it needs to be updated, so we're going to override the two string ourselves. And we're going to start by just saying, you know what, I also want it to print the text, so or the ID. So public two string, and I'll just return quote quote, or we want a hyphen, and then we wanted our ID. So stu sorry, student ID followed by a hyphen. And let's see if this compiles. And now we go over to main, and we're like, oh my gosh, it's going to work. It's going to be so cool. Wait, now it's just printing their ID in a hyphen. Because we said you no longer do what you used to do for the two string. Now you do this. So, notice this does not include their first name or last name. So here's what's kind of cool. We don't have to rewrite all that code. We just say super dot two string. So it says, don't use my string, go up one level and look for two string. I find it. So when it does that, it will do everything it used to do when we do that super dot two string. So it says id hyphen, followed by super dot two string, which is last name comma first name. And this is an example of inheritance and how it's cool.